What's up, everybody? Back with another study here in a series called The Gospels. We're in Mark chapter 8. Hallelujah. Before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so first, I want to start this off before we get into chapter eight. I want to go back to chapter seven, because after I put that video out last night, well, after I recorded the video and in the process of putting it out, God gave me a revelation on something in chapter seven of the book of Mark. And what it was is the Pharisees condemned Jesus' disciples for eating bread with unwashed hands. And not just... See, it was a tradition of men. It was a Jewish law out of the Talmud, not the law of God but a Jewish law out of the Talmud that they had to wash their hands in a specific way before they ate anything. And so they were eating bread. And a lot of people use this scripture, like I said in the last video, a lot of people use this scripture to say that all foods are clean. Uh, that actually, that reference that, that we see in chapter 7, thus he declared all foods clean, isn't, in the original manuscripts that was added in by translators. Jesus never said that. And plus, it said all foods clean. The, G the Jews didn't consider pork and shrimp and different stuff like that to be food. And so that was added in, but he... trying to think about how to say this what God revealed to me yesterday I believe it was a big revelation a deeper revelation on that story so they got the Pharisees got on his disciples for eating bread with unclean hands according to their commandment Now, Jesus is the bread of life. And a lot of people today would say, a lot of Pharisees today would say, you have to get right with God. You have to have clean hands in order to come to him. But Jesus said, through the scripture, We come to him. We come to him with dirt, with unwashed hands. We come to him in our sin and seek him. We eat the bread of life with unwashed hands. But Jesus also said, it's not what goes into a man, the bread of life himself. It's not what goes into, into a man that defiles him. It's not how you come to Jesus that defiles you. But it's what comes out of, out of the heart afterward. And I guess I don't really have anything else to say to that. Uh, I, I hope, hope it was, uh, hope y'all were able to understand that, what I was saying with that. 
We come to him with unwashed hands, with unclean hands. We come to him dirty. We eat the bread of life with unwashed hands. But it's not what goes into us that defiles us, but it's what comes out. What comes out afterwards that can defile us. And so let's go ahead and get into chapter 8. In those days, when there was again a large, large crowd and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now for three days and have not, had nothing to eat. The crowd was there listening to him preach for three days without even eating. He said, I said, if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from a great distance. And his disciples answered him, saying, Where will anybody be able to satisfy or find enough bread in this desolate place to satisfy these people? And he was asking them, Jesus was, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. There's seven loaves of bread, but thousands of people. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground, and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them, and started, give, started giving them to his disciples to serve them. And they served them to the people. They also had a few small fish. And after he had blessed them, Bless the fish. He ordered these to be served as well. And they ate and were satisfied. And they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left of the broken pieces. Started with seven loaves and four, uh, two fish. And there's a, I believe there's a deeper meaning to this as well. 7,000 years of mankind. Uh, two fish representing the two houses of Israel. They ate and were satisfied and picked up seven large baskets full of what, what was left over from the broken pieces. And about 4,000 4, were there. And he sent them away. And immediately he entered the boat with his disciples and came to the district district of Damanthua. The Pharisees came out and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. Sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, Why does this generation seek for a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Leaving them, he again embarked and went away to the other side. And so, there's a, this is one version of the story. There's another scripture that says, The only sign that will be given to this people is the sign of Jonah. Now, Jonah, most people don't realize, Jonah actually died in the belly of the whale or the whatever swallowed him, the fish. He actually died for three days and was resurrected just like Jesus was. And that's why Jesus said the only sign that you will get is a sign of Jonah. That he's going to die for three days and resurrect. And they had forgotten to take the bread and did not have more than one loaf in the boat with them. And he was giving orders to them saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of, the, leaven of Herod. And Bread also represents, you know, doctrine. They began to discuss with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not see or understand? Do you have a hardened heart? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? Rebuking his disciples. And do you not remember 
And so this is a different instance. Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? And how many baskets full of broken pieces you picked up? Five loaves. Because the bread also represents Jesus is the word of God. The five loaves represent the first five books of the Bible, the, the law, the Torah. And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets full of broken pieces you picked up? They said, said in one twelve, Representing the 12 tribes of Israel. When I broke the seven for the 4,000. How many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? And they said to him, seven. And he was saying to them, do you still not understand? And they came to Bethsaida. And they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he brought him out of the village. So first he took him out of the village, away from people. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I see them like trees walking around. And again he laid his hands, hands on his eyes, and he looked intently, and was restored, and began to see everything clearly. And he sent, sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. Because he didn't want his fame to be known yet. And, but this also shows, you know, even with us, it happened with Jesus. He went to go heal the man. And the first time he did it, and, and I'm sure there's a deeper meaning here as well that I'm not seeing right now. But the first time he went to heal the man, his sight wasn't completely restored. And there's, I've healed two people. God is through me has healed two people. And I tried it once. And it was a lot better. And I did it again. And it was completely healed. Just like in, just like with Jesus here. And now that healing can't happen all at once. It does a lot of the time. But sometimes it may take a period of time. It might, may not even happen right away. It might happen weeks, months down the road. Jesus went out, along with his disciples, to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist. Because at this point, John the Baptist had already been killed. And others say, Elijah. But others, one of the prophets. And he continued by questioning them. But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ, the Messiah. And he warned them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man himself must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. And he was stating the matter plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. Well, I hope they're uh, getting a good look at those crosses over there because you know, people sit over here and Watch me all day. Research gang stalking. Research targeted individuals. We're living in the last days. It's the beast kingdom. And they watch certain people. All the time. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Saying, Lord, this shall not be. That, he, that he's supposed to die on the cross. And there's a reason Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't speaking to Peter. Calling, he wasn't calling Peter Satan. 
But he knew Satan was working through Peter. And Peter may have even had a demon that Jesus was referring to as Satan. But Satan was at least being used against Peter there. Being used through Peter there to try to get Jesus to not come to the cross. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We have to deny ourselves. We have to deny our the things that we want to do in this life. We have to deny money and fame and pleasure and whatever we want to do in, in this life. We got to deny that and serve God. And he said, take up his cross and follow me. We got to be willing to die for him. We got to deny this world, all the worldliness. We, we got to deny our, ourselves, our own passions, our own desires, and truly follow him up to the point of death. We have to. We have to truly follow him up, up to the point of death if it comes to that. But, but really, we got to, right now, we got to deny ourselves our own passions, our own desires, our own wants, our own what we believe in needs and follow him with all our heart no matter what. No matter what. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples. And, actually, that's what I just read. He said, for wh whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. So if we want to save our life and, and say we face persecution and our life is threatened and we want to save our life and we deny God, we deny Jesus, we deny the word of God or anything. If we want to save our life, we're going to lose it eternally. But if we lose our life for his sake and the gospel's sake, we will live eternally. We will gain our life, eternal life. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So many people seek the riches today. Seek to be famous. Seek to make all the money in the world. But you can't buy your soul. What's it worth to gain the world and lose your soul? It's, rather, it's, it's better off to lose your life, this physical body, and gain your soul. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. We got to be willing to speak the word. We, we got to not care about what people think. We got to not care about money. We got to not care about fame. We got to not care about what, whatever we want in this life we got to serve God we got to serve Jesus and lay down our life for him if it comes to that whoever is ashamed of him whoever is not willing to speak out and proclaim the gospel to people Jesus is going to be ashamed of of you in front of his father but if you're willing to go out and preach the gospel if you're not ashamed of him if you're willing to go all out and speak the word the Bible says in another place Jesus said in another place 
If you're not ashamed of me, I will not be ashamed of you either. And I will confess your name before my father and before his angels. So let's not be ashamed of God and his word. Let's not be ashamed of Jesus. Let's speak his word. Let's preach the gospel. Let's bring people into the kingdom. We got to, and let's pray for boldness. Lord. And I'm, I want to say a prayer real quick. Lord, I pray for whoever who, who is listening to this, whoever watches this video. I pray that you give them boldness. I pray that they would be filled with your Holy Spirit. That you would give them boldness to go out and proclaim your name. To go out and preach your word. To go out and do whatever you are calling them to do. I thank you, God. I praise you, Lord. Give me boldness, Lord. Give me strength. And lead us all on the straight and narrow path, Lord. Lead us all to walk in your ways and to complete your mission. Whatever you have us each individually doing and together doing. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. You are great. I pray whoever watches this will have understanding on your word and be willing to go out and proclaim your name. I thank you, God. I give you glory. You deserve it all. I thank you. Praise you, Lord. In Yeshua's name. Yahshua's name. Amen. Thank you. Praise you. God is good. Let's walk on a straight and narrow path. Let's not be ashamed to proclaim his name. Let's step out in faith. Let's go and pray for people. If God leads you to pray for somebody, go pray for them. If God leads you to spread, uh, share your testimony, go share your testimony. If God leads you to go and preach the gospel to somebody, preach the gospel to them. If God leads you to go and tell, tell somebody, Jesus loves you. God bless you. Go and do it. We got to step out in faith. And if we're not ashamed of him, he won't be ashamed of us and he'll proclaim our name before the Father and before the angels. But if we are ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of us. And it's not going to be good. But thank you all for tuning in. Let's step out in faith. Step out in faith. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's be humble and blameless. Serve God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. Let's live for him. Let's carry out his mission. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. He loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you're willing to truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of uh, Mark 8 in this series called The Gospels. I thank y'all for tuning in. We're going to continue on through Mark, Luke, John, and also through Acts and maybe a continuation of the book of Acts. We're going through the history of the church for the last couple of thousand years and what we what we got going on now. Uh, Lord willing, that's just an idea for a study. May God's will be done. Let's be humble and blameless. Let's keep his commandments and serve him. And step out in faith. Have boldness in Christ. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.